Yeah. Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to our second class. This is our second live class for children aged four to seven or even four to eight. And we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna talk about your home and the area you live around that is around where you live. And we're gonna to try to think of some words to help you describe your home and describe the area around where you live. And we're gonna talk about pronunciation, speaking, and you can get a pencil and paper and write some stuff down, write some sentences. So let's look at what you need today. What do you need today? Well, first I want you to say hello. Even if I can't hear you, I can sense it. So everybody say hello. And I want you to be ready to have some fun. That's very important for learning. You will learn very easily if you are having fun. And it will. And I want you to think of as many silly ideas you, as you can to um, help you learn all the vocabulary and sentences we're going to talk about. I also want you to get a pencil and paper so that you can write stuff down. This video will be recorded and will be put up on our YouTube channel. So you can go back anytime and review the lesson and pause that video and write your own ideas down. Okay, let's have a look. So let's have a look at the first question. What do you like about school? So how many of you go to school every day or very often? And I want to know, what is your favorite thing about school? And we can make a sentence like this. Something I like about school is, so maybe that something is the teachers. Maybe you like your friends. Maybe you like learning about maths or English or doing sports. Or maybe you like playing with your friends at lunchtime. Or maybe you like traveling to school. What do you like about school? So something I like about school is playing with my friends. Something I like about school is learning English. If that's what you think, then great, because I'm an English teacher, so I think that's the best idea. Um, at this point, you can pause and you can write down your idea. And remember, if you're watching this live, you can go back and review the video. Let's have a look at some questions. So we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about our home, my home. Let's talk about something about your home. Oh, and by the way, if you have any really good ideas or questions that you want to ask me, you can just put them in the comments. So tell me about your home. Which floor do you live on? So I live in Hong Kong, which means there's lots of very tall buildings. And most people, more than 90 percent of people live in an apartment block like this that you can see on the right. So my, my floor that I live on is a 26th floor. It's very high up. And we have a lovely view of the park near our house. Uh, so which floor do you live on? If your home is just one floor, then you live on the ground floor. Ground floor means the floor that's at street level. And above the ground floor, you've got first and second floor. Maybe you live in a house with three floors. So I, you can say, I live in a three-story house or a three-floor house. Story and floor mean the same thing. So which floor do you live on? I live on the do 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 floor. I live on the third floor. Well, actually, I live on the 26th floor. So when I get in the lift, I have to wait quite a few, a couple of minutes for it to go all the way up to the top. OK, let's look at the next question. What is in your home? What sort of things do you have in your home? I'm sure you've got a kitchen and a bathroom and a bedroom. Most people have those things. But what other stuff do you have? Do you have toys? Do you have a sofa? Do you have a TV? I think most people have a TV nowadays. Maybe you have some other things. Maybe you have something special. So I have a do 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 in my home. So I can say I have a lamp in my home. I have a computer in my home. I have a sofa in my home. And what else do I have in my home? I have a kitchen in my home. And I have a hamster in my home because I have a pet hamster. Um, so what's in your home? Obviously, you can write lots of sentences and you can put them all together. So I can have a sofa and a computer and uh, a kitchen in my home. Uh, let's have a look at the next question. Who 
who lives there? Who lives in your home? So a lot of people, they live with their mum and dad, but maybe you also live with your grandma and maybe you've got a helper or auntie helping to look after everybody. Um, and maybe you've got brothers and sisters. And maybe you have lots of people in your home or maybe you just live with your mum and dad only. Um, who lives there? So you can say, I live with, and then you can list the people. I live with my mum. I live with my mum and dad. I live with my mum and dad and brothers and sisters. Or you can say, I live with my family, which is my mum and dad and sister. So you can say my family, which is, and then list the people in your family. And it, by the way, we will be attaching this document that you're looking at onto our YouTube uh, description. So you'll be able to download this PDF and use it at your own time. So who lives there? I live with my family, which is my mum and my dad and my brother. OK, so how many people live in your home? Uh, how many people live in it? This is a similar question. So in my home, we have, in, including me, there's four people. So there are four people living in my home. Let's have a look at the qu next question. What is there to do near your home? This means what kind of activities or fun things can you do near your home? So what is near your home? Well, I would say if you can walk or cycle there in about five to 10 minutes, that counts as near your home. If you have to get in a car and drive 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I would say that's not really near your home. So near your home is somewhere you can walk to maybe in five to 10 minutes. So what is there to do? This means fun things. You can, uh, so how can we answer this? Well, we can make different kinds of sentences. Let's try one. There is a park near my home, or I can play in the park near my home. Uh, I can ride a bike in the park near my home. There is a restaurant near my home. There's a shopping mall near my home. There's a swimming pool near my home. Who has a swimming pool near their home? Let us know in the comments if you have anything very interesting near your home. When I lived in London, I lived near... I live near Tower Bridge, which is the very famous bridge you always see on the TV and in postcards. So I can say Tower Bridge is near my home. Um, OK, so there could be lots of interesting, exciting things to do. Or maybe there's not much to do near your home. You live in the middle of the countryside. You can say there's not much to do near my home except walking in the in the countryside. OK, let's have a look at some vocabulary. Are you ready for some vocabulary? So we can look at some pictures. What is the person there doing? Maybe they are looking at some uh, things to see. Oh, here. Look at the girl in the second picture. How does she feel? She doesn't look very happy to me. Is she very hot or very cold? I think by the, the steam coming off her head and the big sun and the sweat, and the tissue, I'm going to say, she is feeling very hot. Oh, look, there's lots of people crushed together. They're very squashed. I wonder what the word for that is. I'll tell you in a minute. And next, here's a boy, and he's running, and he's drinking water. How does he feel? Does he feel hot or cold? And next, oh, dear. That looks like mummy and she's got lots of different things to do at the same time. Uh, what does that mean? Does that mean she's not got much to do or she has got a lot to do? And let's look at the next picture. Oh, what's happening here? Is that a chicken? Is it cooking? OK, let's have a look at the words that can match those pictures. And let's have a look. Oh, busy. Busy means you've got lots and lots of things to do. And you are maybe feeling a bit uh, nervous and angry because you have so much stuff to do and everything is going a bit crazy. So you can see here at the bottom in the middle, the mum, she's 
calling on her phone. She's looking after the baby. She's got a cat. There's a dog and she's trying to do the ironing. So she's very busy. Next one, crowded. Crowded means many people in the same place. So the picture on the top right, with all these people squashed together. Looks like they're at a party and they're having some drinks. They are, they are very crowded. Some people get crowded and busy mixed together. Well, you can have a lot, big crowd of people all bunched together, but they could be very calm, which means they're not busy. They could just be sitting down and relaxing, but they could be crowded. Um, busy is more like you've got lots and lots of things to do. Crowded is more like there's not many people in the same place. Nearby. So it looks like this lady has a lot of things nearby. She's walking around. She's got uh, hot air balloons and she's got a pagoda and she's got a castle and some trees nearby. Hot. Look at the boy running. Can you see that he has, uh, he's drinking his water and he's got the sun. So he's very hot. Humid. Humid is similar to hot, but not quite the same. Humid means there's lots of water in the air. So I live in Hong Kong and it's a very, very humid place, which means you're always sweating and always feel damp. But if you go to the desert, it will be hot, but it will be dry. So humid is the opposite of dry. It means there's lots of water in the air. And, and, and visit. Oh, I can see the lady at the top is visiting a place. Um, and she's visiting somewhere with lots to do. So let's say all the words together. Are you ready? Busy. So even though busy is spelt, spelt with a U, we pronounce it I, busy. Can you say busy? Uh, oh, and also the S is pronounced like a Z. So it's B, Z, B, Z. And then you can say busy. I hope that was an easy one to say. Let's look at the next one. Crowded. The O-W sound is a ow. So you go ow. Bring your mouth closer together. Crowded. Can you say that? Crow, crow, crowded. Okay, and let's look at the next one. Nearby. Nearby. Nearby means something's near to you. But if I was going to say, for example, the shop is near to me, I would have to say the shop is near to me. Or I can just use the word nearby instead. The shop is nearby. Nearby means near to me. And let's look at, uh, and nearby is quite easy to say. Let's look at the next one, hot. Hot is quite an easy one to say as well. Make sure you get the O of the O, the O sound, hot. And let's look at the next word, humid. Uh, with the beginning sound, we put a bit of a Y in it. Hue, hue, like human, humid. Try to say that. And remember, after the H and before the U, there's a Y sound. Hu, humid. And the last word, visit. Well, the S is pronounced like a Z, just like busy. So busy, visit. Um, I, I, visit. And make sure with the V, v that your bottom lip touches your teeth at the top like this. V, 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 V. v. Visit. A lot of people struggle to make the V sound. It's the same as the F sound, but we vocalize. That means we use our vocal cords. So F like frog and V like visit. And if you put your fingers here on your throat, you'll be able to feel your vocal cords. Visit. Okay, well done. You guys are doing very, very well. And let's look at a little story here it's a story of my home so I live in Hong Kong you can see the Hong Kong flag there's a swimming pool a beach it's very hot restaurants and a tower okay what well, I want you to read with me I'm going to read this story and I want you to read it with me and we're gonna do it one sentence at a time my home is in Hong Kong. Can you say that? My home is in Hong Kong. 
Hong Kong is a busy, crowded city. Hong Kong is a busy, crowded city. Now, I want you to read the next sentence with me. Are you ready? My home is a flat in a tall building. A flat is uh, when you have a home on one floor. Sometimes we call it an apartment. So when you have one uh, part of a floor on a building, you, you, you live in a flat. Let's say that sentence again together. My home is a flat in a tall building. And let's say the next one. I'm going to split this one in two. The building has facilities. Can you say that? The building has facilities. Like a pool and playground. Say that with me. Like a pool and playground. Let's read the whole sentence together. The building has facilities like a pool, like a swimming pool and playground. OK, yes, I have a swimming pool in next to my building, which is very handy on a hot day, which is most days in Hong Kong, to be honest. Facilities, what does facilities mean? Well, I'll come back to that one in a minute. Let's read the next sentence. Are you ready? There are lots of shops and restaurants nearby. Let's say that again. There are lots of shops and restaurants nearby. Here's a restaurant that you can see. Okay. The weather in Hong Kong is always hot and humid. Even in winter, the weather is hot and humid. Can you believe that? Let's try to say that sentence again and I'll split it in two. The weather in Hong Kong is always hot and humid. Okay, and let's look at the next line. In Hong Kong, we can visit the beach and country park. Let's say that one together. In Hong Kong, we can visit the beach and country park. Country park is what we call uh, the forest and parks that you can walk around. There's no buildings there. Hong Kong actually has a lot of country park. So when there's no buildings, uh, it's nice and open end with lots of forests. Um, OK, let's look at facilities. My building has facilities like a swimming pool and playground. Facilities means the things that can help you, the places that can help you. A shop is a facility. A toilet is a facility. A swimming pool is a facility. A library is a facility. What else is a facility? Uh, a playground is a facility for playing. So a facility can help you do something. Shop, playground, toilet, swimming pool. Uh, they are all facilities that can help you. Now let's have a look at the next one. And let's talk about your town. And I'd love to know uh, about your town and how it is. Um, tell us about your town or city. My town is... So remember I said Hong Kong is busy and crowded, hot and humid. How about your town? Is it hot or cold? Is it sunny or rainy? Or uh, is it busy or is it quite quiet? Is it very crowded like Hong Kong or is it open and empty? Describe your town. My town is... Try to write a sentence with two descriptive words in it. Uh, is where is it? So Hong Kong is in Asia. Hong Kong is a city in Asia, part of China. Um, where is your town? Maybe if you live in London, it is in England. And what can you do there? Uh, in my t in my town, my town, my in my city, Hong Kong, you can go to the beach there. You can play in the park there. You can go to the zoo there. You can get very hot there. So there's lots of things 
And of course, you can go to the shopping mall and hang out in the shopping mall there. I think that's the same with most cities. Okay, and for the last activity, I want you to draw a big house. Uh, draw a big house that you'd like to live in. My home. So, what can you have? How many bedrooms will your home have? And what else will it have? I want you to draw a home, maybe a dream home, a big house or a big apartment. And I want you to draw five things that it will have. Would it have a bathroom and bedroom? What else will you have inside? Maybe a TV, sofa, what else? Think of some fun things that could be in your home and draw them and label them. So if you've drawn a sofa, you can draw a little arrow and write sofa. Okay, but I'm going to stop there and I'm going to give you time to draw your dream home and all the things that's in it. And remember, we're going to leave this up on YouTube so you can watch it anytime and go back to it. See you next time. Bye bye.